Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial, we are going to customize further the Z shell. So if you follow the previous tutorial, we installed the Z shell from scratch. We installed also the oh My Z shell framework. And in this tutorial, we are going to actually install also the power level 10K theme. So let's jump right into it. So here we are again in the Z shell. If you follow the previous tutorial, you should be up and running here with the Z shell. We installed in the last tutorial the oh My Z shell framework and we customized it with a new theme and some plugins. And in this tutorial, we are going to install a new theme called Power Level 10K, which will allow us to customize the Z shell even further. So before proceeding installing the theme, we need to make sure that we have the fonts that we need for the theme. So to do this, we can install the fonts directly from the Arch user repository and the Arch main repository. So let's install the two fonts we need. The first one is the TTF Deja Vu font and the other one is the TTF Meslon Nerd font Power Level 10K font. So one is from the main Arch repository and the second one is from the AUR. So to install the fonts, we can use our Arch plugin that we installed in the last tutorial. And to install packages with Yay, we can type in Y-A-I-N for yay install and then the packages we need. So the first font we need to install is the ttf deja vu and the second font is ttf meslo nerd font power level 10k and then we can hit enter. Now accept here the ttf deja vu font and it's going to check also for the second one which is here so difference is to show none and hit enter. And it's going to take a moment here to download and install. And there you go, the font is now installed, so we can clean up the terminal. And now we can proceed by installing the theme. So we have the oh My Z Shell framework already installed here, so I'm going to use the framework to install this theme. To do this, we are going to use the git clone command again. So I'm going to type in git clone, and as you can see, it suggests me the last plugins I installed, but I don't need this one right now. And then dash dash depth equal one. And then https colon slash slash github.com slash r o m k a t v slash power level 10k dot git. And we're going to install this theme in the custom themes under our oh my z shell directory, the same way we did for the plugins when we installed external plugins. So I'm going to type in the dollar sign and the curly brace and then zsh underscore custom colon slash and then the dollar sign and the home directory in this case and then slash dot o dash my dash zsh slash custom then close the curly brace and then slash themes and slash power level 10k this is the directory where we want to install our theme on and then we can hit enter it's going to take a second to do that there you go now we need to activate the theme in our configuration file. So we can type in Vim and you see the auto completion is there. So I just hit the right arrow and hit enter. And I'll go back here on the top of the file until I find the theme, which is right here. And for the theme, I'm going to enter here power level 10K slash power level 10K. So we need to repeat this twice. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. And we need to source the configuration file one more time. So we can type in source and I auto complete here with the right arrow and hit enter. And now we are presented with the power level 10K configuration menu. So we need to pay attention here to what it's asking us. So the first question is, does this sign here look like a diamond rotated square? In my case, it does look like it. So I'm going to hit yes here by hitting Y. Does this look like a lock? It does, so I'm gonna hit Y here again. Does this look like a Debian logo? And indeed it does, so I'm just gonna hit Y here again. Now, do all these icons fit between the crosses? So I can see the icons here, and they do fit between the crosses. So I can say here, yes, icons are very close to the crosses, but there is no overlap. So I'm gonna select the first option here and hit Y. And now we can choose our prompt style. So we have several options here. We can choose the lean style, the classic style, the rainbow style, and the pure style. This has the prompt on the left side and also on the right side. Now, this is really a matter of personal preference. You can choose, of course, whichever you like. 
In my case, I'm going to go with the rainbow because it's a little bit more colorful. So I'm just going to hit the number three here. Now we need to choose the character set. We have two choices here. In my case, I'm going to go with Unicode, but of course, if you like the second option, you can go with that as well. So I'm just going to hit one here. Now we can choose whether we want to see the current time in the shell. So we have no 24 hour format or 12 hour format. I'm going to go with a 24 hour format here. So I'm just going to hit two. Now we need to decide how we want to see the separators. So the separators are these lines between the two colors. Right now we can choose between angled, which looks like an arrow, vertical, slanted, or round. Again, this is really a matter of personal preference. And remember that this is going to reflect also on the time if you choose to show this. In my case, I'm going to go with angle. So I'm just going to hit number one. Now we can choose the prompt heads. We can choose between the sharp, blurred, slanted, and round. Again, matter of personal preference here. I'm going to go with the first one. So I'm just going to hit one. Now the prompt tails, which are going to be this side and this side, of course, in my case, I'm going to go with flat. You can choose, of course, other options if you want. So I'm just going to hit number one here. And now we can choose the prompt height. So we can choose whether we want to have one line or two lines. You can see the difference here. So you can choose accordingly. In my case, I'm going to go with one line. So I'm just going to hit number one. And now we can choose also the prompt spacing. Again, this is very personal. You can choose between compact and sparse. I'm going to go with sparse here just to have a little bit more distance between the prompts. So I'm just going to hit number two. And now we can choose between a few icons or many icons. I'm going to go with many icons just to have it a little bit more graphical. So I'm just going to hit the number two. And we can choose now the prompt flow, whether we want to have it concise or fluent. I'm going to go here with concise. It takes a little bit less space for me. So I'm just going to hit the number one. Now we can choose whether we want to enable the transient prompt. And you can see the difference on how it looks. It's again, literally a matter of personal preference. But in my case, I'm going to go for no. So I'm just going to hit no here. And now we can choose whether we want to activate instant prompt. So what actually is instant prompt? So the instant prompt, it basically reads your configuration file for the Z shell. And if you have a lot of plugins in there, or maybe you just have a few ones, but they are very slow, you might notice that it takes some time for the Z shell to start. Now, activating this option basically allows the Power Level 10K theme to remove this lag, even if it's not caused by a theme. So it's really up to you how you want to configure this. In my case, I'm going to go for quiet because I want to enable instant prompt. Not that I have many plugins here. I have a very few. But as it says here anyway, if you are not sure what to do, then choose the verbose mode because if there is a problem, it's going to show up when you start the shell. In my case, I'm going to go with quiet. So it basically enables instant prompt and it doesn't print out warnings. So I'm just going to hit the number two here. It's asking me now if I want to overwrite the P10K configuration file. I will say yes here and apply the changes to the Zsha configuration file. I'm going for yes. And now we have our new login prompt there. So let's clean up the terminal. What we can do here, of course, we can navigate through directories. For example, let's type in CD and let's navigate to the default directory again. And you can see here, for example, a small Q, this padlock indicates that this directory is actually protected by pseudo privileges. So you'll be reminded here that any file that you edit in this directory, you will have to type in the pseudo command. If you go back to the home directory and let's go, for example, to the downloads directory. So let's type in CD and then downloads. You can see it doesn't have the lock because this belongs to our home directory. So it belongs to the user. Now, one last touch we can give to our theme here. Let's go back to the home directory. It's of course to install NeoFetch. So we can install again NeoFetch here by typing Y-A-I-N for yay install and then NeoFetch and hit enter. Enter our pseudo password and proceed with the installation. There you go. Now we can clean up the terminal and insert the NeoFetch in our configuration file. So let's type in Vim and then autocomplete with the right arrow and hit enter. I'm going to go here on the top of the file and I'm just going to put it on top because it's going to open first. So I'm just going to insert mode here, enter a new line and type it in here, Neo Fetch. Then we can save the file and exit Vim. We can close once our terminal and reopen it. And we have here Neo Fetch with our power level 10K theme and the new login prompt. We can see also the shell we are using here is the Z shell 
version 5.8 and the terminal is console. Now, if you want to rerun the configuration file for the power level 10k theme, what we can do here, we can type in p10k and then configure and hit enter. And we go through basically again the same configuration we did at the beginning. In my case, I don't want to do this, so I'm just going to hit quit. And as you can see, it gives you also here the visual clue that we exited the program before. Now, let me clean up the terminal. We installed the theme here from GitHub. You can, of course, install this also from the Arch user repository. And I will leave a link, of course, to this in the video description below. However, if we want to update the theme, because we installed this with the OMIZ shell framework, we have a specific command for this. And again, I will leave a link to this and also to the Arch Linux repository for updating this theme in the video description below. So to update the power level 10k theme from the OMIZ shell framework, we can type in git dash c and then the dollar sign curly brace zsh underscore custom colon dash dollar sign home slash dot o dash my dash zsh slash custom close the curly brace and then themes slash power level 10k and then pull and then we can hit enter so it's going to check already up to date so this is how you can update your theme from github again don't worry about these commands i will leave a link to all of these in the video description below let me clean up the terminal and this is going to do it for the power level 10k theme on the z shell all in all i have to say i really like the z shell and also the power level 10k they make work in the terminal easier especially with the visual clues i showed you before and if you're working a lot in the terminal you're going to find with time you actually get used to also the plugins and auto completions and you'll have an hard time actually going back to work without them if you want to try the power level 10k let me know in the comments below what you think about it and how you customize it i'm very curious to know how it's your experience so this is how you can customize your z shell with the power level 10k theme it's a very nice theme and you can rerun the configuration if you are not happy with the one you have and it's very flexible and i really like working with it it gives a lot of clues also about the system when you're working especially with system files if you try this let me know in the comments below how you like it and i hope also that you like this video so if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already subs always helps us out and if you want to support the channel you can do so by visiting our patreon website or you can donate via paypal through our website as well thank you so much for watching this video guys and i'll see you very soon in the next one